Okay, I'm here to play through a solo game live. Uh, if you're looking for the rules on how to play Ascension Tactics solo, uh, those are in another video. So I'm just going to jump right in and start this game off. Villain gets to go first, so we're going to see what happens. First, uh, the Fires of War. Villain champions get plus five strength and command the Skull Villain. So the Skull Villain is going to come over here, move three spaces towards the Skull. Oops, that looks good. Uh, no, no worry about the threat uh, power there. And then I command the moon villain twice. So we're going to take this guy, the Arha Templar, and move him twice towards the uh, moon target. So that's one, and one, two, three, that's two. So oh, that's a mistake from our little scripter. Uh, these guys cannot pick up the uh, treasure tokens. They can land on them, but they can't pick them up. Okay, and that's all the villain gets to do. So now it's my turn. Uh, get this bag out of the way. Whoa, hey there, bag. All right, play all. I've got four uh, runes and three power. So let's see what we got to buy. Scrap bot, pretty cool. I've got a shrine attendant, which gets me heavy, extra heavier mystic for cheap. Morbid hammer, pretty fun card. Arbor of the Precipice would be great, but I can't afford it. And a flourishing druidess for two. So when I look, now you can actually want to start thinking about what the villains you're playing against are. Each villain has its own kind of little tricks around it. So like, for example, the Demon Slayer here can't be defeated unless I play a Void card this turn. So the Demon Slayer is already out there towards the center. So I might want to be thinking about getting some Void cards to defeat the Demon Slayer. Also, Prime, uh, Surge B is one of the powers that he has when a, whenever a card says Surge B off of the scheme deck. I'll have to reveal a mechanic card or exhaust two of my champions, which means they won't be able to be commanded that turn. So there's some incentives for me to pick up those two cards. The Runic Lycanthrope um, gets a bonus to power while there's lifebound cards in the center row, so that can influence that. And the Arhat Templar, whenever he kills one of my guys, I get, he gets to command the boss for free. Um, that doesn't really influence my buys right now. Um, so given that, I think I want to lean towards Mechana. Oh, uh, Rocket Courier, I didn't even see that one before. Rocket Courier is really powerful too. Um, and also I happen to have a Reactor Monk that lets me get one extra rune every turn for Constructs. So, I'm going to go ahead and buy this for four, and I've got one left over thanks to the Reactor Monk, and I'm also going to buy the Shrine Attendant. Now I've got three Command to go, um, and I think I'm going to go ahead and take my Arha Templar and move them towards the center. And that's going to end the turn, so we're going to put these cards away, and I'm going to draw a hand of five cards to end my turn. And now let's see what the boss has to say about all this. Let's go boss! Uh, void Corruption. Banish the entire center row. Villain champions get plus two strength for each void card banished, and then command the skull guy. Okay, let's see how many, let's see. So it looks like we got two void cards here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. All those are gone. We'll refill the row. Three, four, five, six. We're going to command uh, this guy. So once he gets to, once he gets to any of these spaces near where his shrine is, I'm going to just compress these back to the center here. Um, and then he'll stop there, and they're going to start scoring points from that. Uh, he had a bonus to his attack, but it doesn't matter because he's not in range to kill my guys. Um, so uh, that's good for him. Now, let's see what else we got. Widow's Kiss. Each player destroys one of their constructs. Fortunately, I don't have any constructs yet. And command the little tree icon guy, which is the Runic Lycanthrope. So the Runic Lycanthrope is going to go spawn on the spawn point and move three spaces down towards the tree shrine. Okay. Those are two powers. There's four cards in the discard pile now. Um, now, at the end of the villain's turn, the villain is controlling the center zone, so the villain's going to score a point. Boo to me. And now let's see what I can do on my turn. I have four runes and three power again. Not surprise, surprise. Um, so, ooh, this one's kind of good. Shadow Star has a good ambush. I can deal four damage to a champion. That could be useful. Uh, giving a champion speed plus one command for free is pretty good. Ambush ready a champion would let me command somebody twice, potentially, if I had enough command to do that. Uh, I don't, but it's a good void card, which might help me with the Demon Slayer later. Thicket Familiar is not bad. Ulam the Crusher is one of my favorites. Uh, gain three power, um, and if allegiance, meaning if I play multiple void cards, it can give a champion speed plus one and double attack. And the Morbid Hammer, which I wanted to buy last turn, so it's just still here. So, tricky, tricky situation. I think I'm going to work more on developing my board position a little bit, but rather than kind of rush towards this guy. Uh, so I think I just want to take the best card for me to be able to play rather than the thing that's going to influence this guy. So I think I actually want 
a dream walker first so I can get a little bit more command and, and movement power so I'm gonna take that for four and then with three I'm gonna remove my Arha Templar to take this treasure token so plus four defense treasure token I'll just play with these out on the board here so everybody can see them normally you keep this hidden in your hand but in a solo game that doesn't matter because it's just me here just you know me and all y'all watching so all right so here we go that's the end of my turn so group up the cards put them in the discard pile flip it over shuffle that up shuffling is my favorite part of the ui in this thing just shake the thing to shuffle it and i draw my hand now let's see what the boss has to say about this um all right here we go flip first card unleash hell draw a treasure villain champions get that treasure bonus till the start of your next turn and then command the skull all right so here's a treasure um thing let's see what treasure the boss gets the boss is going to have plus two defense. So until the next turn, the all the boss's minions have plus two defense. This is one of my favorite cards because the treasure adds so much variety to play. Now, here's an interesting situation because this um, the skull one has been commanded a lot. And it's already in the center. Now, if he had the ability to run over and kill my guy, um, he would do that. Um, but because he's too far away, it would take four moves to get here at least. It looks like actually five with the tree. Uh, he won't move anywhere, so he's going to stay right where he is. Uh, that was the first card I played for the turn, so I still play one more turn, one more card. Each player destroys one of their constructs. No constructs. Got lucky again there. And then move the moon uh, piece, which is over here. So the moon piece is going to move him also into the into into uh, scoring position. So now the boss is scoring two points. Now he's got he's off to a little head start, but don't worry, I'm not done yet. Um, and also don't forget that the, um, the we're playing this game to 20 for the, on the basic scenario. So I've got a little time to make this up. Okay, so we're going to start thinking about my hand here. I've got a Rocket Courier, which is very powerful. I could get uh, some bonus movement in. In fact, I could even get my Arha Templar to run uh, all the way to the center and attack the Demon Slayer. But without a Void card, I can't kill the Demon Slayer. So that's not going to help me. Uh, so let's see. What do we want to do? What do we want to do? I think... We'll see if there's anything exciting to buy. Um, I think... I still do. I think I might want this morbid hammer after all. So I'm going to use my shrine attendant. I'll banish it to gain a mystic. Mystic goes straight to my hand. Then I'll use the mystic and two more to buy the morbid hammer. So I can start pumping up my guys a little bit so they can have a better job of taking down these champions. They're very powerful. They're 10 10, 7s, high, high, very high defense. So I want to make sure I've got most of my squad can take them out. So now who goes where? Who goes where? So I have the ability to potentially get a lot of speed. So my Twilight Scout has speed plus one built in. This could give me another speed, which would be an extra two speed. This would be an extra four speed. So it could move seven spaces, which is pretty insane. So I could go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, still one away from being able to actually kill this Arha Templar. Uh, could this guy get there? He would only have six moves. So one, two, three. No, not even close. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I could get over to the Runic Lycanthrope over here. That's I think, might be my best bet. So I've got two power uh, to play. I'm talking through a lot of my thinking here because, well, it's solo mode, it's just me, so might as well hear what's going on. And, and I'll show you like how much strategy there actually is in just playing this out. I really want to see, because my Arha Templar power lets me get a bonus command, so being able to kill someone is actually pretty valuable. So I'm going to put the Rocket Courier on the Arha Templar. Then I'm going to use Dream Walker to give the Arha Templar uh, plus one speed and command it for free. So that means he gets to move plus two speed from the Rocket Courier, plus one speed from this is three, built in of three, so that's six total. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, and then I'm going to attack the Runic Lycanthrope. My, my power here is, oh, my power here is um, ten. So even though he's getting plus two defense, uh, and he has a defense of seven, uh, this is going to be enough to kill him. So I'm going to kill the Runic Lycanthrope. Get out of here, buddy. I'll move him over here, back to his card. Uh, he's worth two honor, so I immediately gain two honor. See, I told you not to worry. I still got, I still got game, um, and I get the slay power from my Arha Templar, which lets me command another champion for free. So that's gonna let me start walking this reactor monk out to the center, and I still have not used my two command uh, so far. So I'm gonna use two to to run the. I'm gonna run this uh, Twilight Scout up. Now I'm keeping it just out of range of his Arha Templar because his Arha Templar, if he commands it and hits me, it's pretty bad. Now there are ways for him to gain speed bonuses, so it's a little bit risky to, uh, to make this play. But I, you know, kind of gotta get in, gotta get in the mix. <clears throat> okay, I think that's all I got for this turn. But that was a pretty nice way to like get an efficient turn. And this Arha Templar with uh, speed boost is gonna be a, a real. Uh, 
champion for me here. I mean, literally, he is a champion, but you know what I mean. Uh, he's going to get me some, hopefully, uh, he can run around and kill stuff and give me a lot of bonus command. Uh, okay, let's see what the boss has to say about this. There's six cards in the discard pile. First one, equip a construct from the center row to the moon one. Let's see, is there a construct in the center row? Yep, there is. Um, okay, so he's going to get uh, this shadow star. Uh, ambush powers do not work for the um, the boss, so at least I don't have to worry about that part. Um, but now this Arhat Templar is getting bigger, so he's a... Uh, oops. Get this all organized. Uh, so he's now a 12-6. And then... Uh, Alright, we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, wait. Aha! There you go. Um, and then I command uh, the uh, Skull Guy. Skull Guy is still just out of range. Uh, this Demon Slayer here, so he's going to continue to hang out where he is. So that was the first card. Next card. Okay, so first, Villain Champions get plus five attack, and he would command the Arha Templar. Arha Templar, like I said, fortunately, is just out of range uh, of my Twilight Scout, so I cleverly avoided that. Now, you'll also notice when I talked about the threat level, when the discard pile gets up to a certain amount, um, the threat level triggers, but it doesn't count the cards that you're playing that turn. So technically, I've been kind of shorthanding it, but technically the cards you play this turn stay in play until the end of the turn, just like when you play cards out of your hand, right? Technically, every card you play from your hand doesn't go to your discard pile until the end of the turn. Same is true here. So so I don't have to worry about the threat trigger, but now they're going to start coming really soon. So the boss is about to start getting a lot better and better at this. But either way, the boss is going to get two points because he's controlling these two honor token, um, the honor shrines here. And I'm going to hope that I can get... Uh, some better maneuvers on my side. So I really need some void cards to be able to kill this guy. This Demon Slayer is uh, troubled, to say the least. Um, I've still got four and three this turn. So I think my best bet is probably not actually going to be. I don't know. I kind of want. I kind of want to pick up some treasures. I could move this guy back into position and start scoring some points over here. I could move him over here, but that doesn't really help because I still can't kill the Demon Slayer. So I think I'm going to get a one of these cards. Um, all right, I'm going to take Ulan the Crusher because um, I like need more Void cards so I can make sure to take this guy out, and that gives me one left over uh, so I can pick up a Thicket Familiar. Uh, Thicket Familiar is not great in my deck right now because I don't have any other uh, Lifebound cards. I don't have anything that triggers off Allegiance for Lifebound, so I think I'm just going to stop there. Um, and I will move my Arha Templar. I think I'm willing to give up a point for a turn. I mean, he's still got five moves, so I'm just going to grab another treasure because I really feel like I need to build up some benefits here if I'm going to start running around the board and doing what I want to do. All right. Draw my hand. Three cards. Reshuffle the deck. Draw two more cards. And it's boss time. Let's go, boss. All right. Each player discards a card at random, and then uh, command things. All right. So random discards. If it was physical cards, I would just shuffle them up, but I don't have that here. So I'm just gonna create a uh, oops object component. Let's create a die. Oop, that's not what I wanted. Four sided die is not gonna cut it. Six sided die will do it. All right. Great. Let me close these windows. All right. So I'm gonna roll die. This is one. This is five. I'll reroll sixes. Here we go. Four, one, two, three, four. Lost that card. Boo. And then command the uh, this guy here. Once again, not willing, not able to reach my thing. So he's just going to hold the whole territory here. But now this is the first time one of these threat powers is happening, which deploys a cultist on or adjacent to the moon shrine. The moon shrine's over here. Um, the villain cultists get in. So the cultists are, and when they work for the villain, are worth one honor each if I can kill them. They're not hugely threatening, but they can help control territory. So when a lot of them get deployed, it becomes harder and harder for me to push back and retake territory. Okay, so that uh, was the first boss card. Now the second boss card. Banish the center row again. Villain champions gets plus two for each card. Enlightened card banish. And command the moon guy. All right, so again, moon guy is fortunately, I've been getting very lucky with these with these flips. So this guy's not getting commanded. So then uh, there are no enlightened cards. That part doesn't matter, and the other thing doesn't trigger. So we're just going to banish the center row. We try to make a bunch of cards that banish the center row to force you to continually rethink what's happening in, in play. You can't rely on cards being there 
Uh, what's available in the row matters a lot, like as you can see with cards like the Runic Lycanthrope that trigger off of it, different kinds of effects. So it it's, keeps the game moving, keeps things interesting and shifting as it, as it goes. Um, okay, so that's the second ability. The boss is once again scoring two points, heavily controlling these two territories. Um, and I'm down a card. So I am, I was saying don't worry about me, but maybe worry a little bit right now. All right, uh, once again, three command, and this time three buy. It's a whole new center row. So Aesthetic of the Little Slide lets me draw two cards. Cetra would be awesome, because the enemy does have a construct right now, and she's always really cool. Summon an extra mini. Land Talker, pretty good. Gain three runes and give a bonus to my team. Vine Weaver would let me destroy a construct also, and can help start getting some allegiance in. Another Land Talker, another Shrine Attendant. Okay. Uh, in this board, I think I'm most excited about Aesthetic of the Lizard's Eye, just because I love drawing cards. So I'm going to take that. Uh, and then I've still got three command. My Arha Templar, since he's got the most speed, is still my favorite uh, guy to run around the board with. Move, I could move the Reactor Monk into position here, but I'm just asking to be killed by the Demon Slayer. I could move the Twilight Scout up and kill the Cultist to get an extra point. Um, but I'm walking into that Arhat Templar. I've gotten super lucky that none of these prime triggers have happened yet, um, because she's the biggest and nastiest. No surges, no prime triggers, so I'm going to kind of just hope uh, I can continue to get to a good spot. So I'm going to move the reactor, I'm going to move the Arhat Templar into position. This way I'll score a point this turn, and I can run across and kill the Demon Slayer if I draw a Void card next turn, which I think I should. I've got some Void cards in there. So that's what I'm counting on. So one point for me, and then that's all I get to do. So I'm going to draw five cards. Okay, I did get a void card, so that's good. Assuming this doesn't go too badly for me. Let's see what we get. Okay, Mind Feast. Each player discards a card at random. Oh, I hope it's not my void card. Uh, and then command the uh, tree guy. All right, here we go. Roll the die. From the left. Number two. Whoo, just missed it. Okay. Uh, and then this guy gets commanded. That's okay. That was one of the best case scenarios because he's not kind of threatening me right now. And then deploy a cultist on or adjacent to the little shrine here. Uh, the tree shrine. Okay, so that's that's contesting that zone. That's card number one. Let's see what card number two does. Each player destroys one of their constructs. Ah, boo! My Arhat Templar can't just run around the board willy-nilly. Uh, okay, so construct down. And now, of course, he also gets to command the boss, which is Prime, who's his biggest guy. So the boss is going to roll, roll on in, start moving towards the center. Um... And then the threshold also happens because he's got more than eight cards in his discard pile at the start of the turn. So he's also going to command the skull, which is this guy. Uh, I have stayed out of range of the skull, so fortunately he's just going to hang out where he is. Fortunately slash unfortunately because now he's scoring points. And then uh, that was, oh sorry, that was the second card. Okay. Mm, boss gets one point for scoring this one, one point for scoring this one. We're contesting here, so just two points for the boss. I need to start getting some action, but that's okay. Actually, it's not okay, because I just lost my... By losing that construct, uh, my Arha Templar can't come over and kill this guy as easily. I do have a treasure that can help me, though, so I might end up having to use that to make this turn go the way I want it to. All right, four runes, five power. Let's see what we got. I wish I was doing this live. So this is just recorded, because it's so late at night when I'm actually doing this, but it'd be more fun to do it live. I'll do one of these in a Twitch stream, so you guys can help advise me, and we can talk about it together. But for now, for now, oof, four runes, I could buy Cetra. Cetra's a nice one to have available. Um, and that would let me kill this construct at least. I think I'm going to want to run, I think I'm, I'm going to want to use my Arha Templar. Use my Arha Templar to kill this guy. And that would get me a free command. And then I could use my speed boost to move this guy. And then I could kill the Demon Slayer. That feels pretty good to me. And I'd still have two power left over to command my Twilight Scout if I wanted to grab a, grab a treasure or kill this guy. Okay, I think I figured out a plan. Uh, I'm going to uh, use the three uh, power from Ulan the Crusher to command the Arha Templar. Arha Templar is going to kill this cultist. I used, I used one of my cultists. I should have used one of his cultists. Um, we have detachable bases in the game, so you can actually know whose cultists are whose and whose things are whose. So I'll kill that guy. Which gets me one point, because I killed the cultist. And then I'm going to walk him over and take another uh, token here, because I feel like I need some tokens. I'm going to buy Cetra for four. 
So Cetra joins my army uh, as an awesome mini. And I'm going to, uh, that lets me kill the construct that was on this guy. So that goes away. It gets banished. Whenever constructs get killed on the villains, they get banished. And now I can command someone for free, which, as previously discussed, I'm going to command. I'm going to give plus two speed using this um, treasure to my reactor monk. And I'm going to go one, two, three, four. And now I'm going to kill the Demon Slayer. And I can do that because I played a void card. So, haha. -ha. So, Demon Slayer gets knocked out. That's also going to be worth three points to me because he's worth three points. So, getting back in the game. Uh, and I still have two power left over. So, I can command my Twilight Scout. So, I have a choice of take out the Cultist and um, take a risk that he his Arha Templar kills me. Um, but otherwise contest the zone. Or kind of run over here and I could take this treasure... And I'm still taking a risk if the Arhat Templar kills me, but at least I'm going to have some more defenses. Um, or I could just ignore these things entirely. Um, if, I, if I stand here and the Arhat Templar kills me, at least he, he's leaving the space. Or I could just say, you know what, I don't think I'm going to win this zone. I'm going to run away. Uh, I'm going to go elsewhere. It's a tricky spot because the Arhat Templar being able to command Prime is a big deal right now. Because Prime can just run over and kill my Reactor Monk. Even Oh, I get, actually, I got my plus four defense here. So my plus four defense actually maybe swings me in the other direction because I can defend myself from Prime. All right, so that means I'm going to take a shot at it, and I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to kill this cultist and contest this spot. So this cultist is dead. I get one more point for killing it. I control this zone. Uh, this one's contested by the boss, so I get one more point at the end of my turn. So we are tying up 9-9. Nine nine. This has got to go. I'm going to draw four cards, flip this over, draw my last card. Let's see what the boss has to say. Ooh, I'm excited about that hand. All right, boss says banish the center row. Villain champions get plus two strength for each lifebound card banished. And I see three lifebound cards. So every, all the villains are going to get plus six strength this whole turn. As these cards go away. Banish cards here. Let's go with some more action. And then we're going to command the uh, tree villain, which is this guy. Can he get over to me? Doesn't look like it. Would take him four moves to get to my Arhat Templar, so instead he's just going to walk towards the, the shrine. And then 12 is the threshold, which I did have... Oh, I did have 12. It says each player discards all lifebound cards. Okay, fortunately I have not bought any lifebound cards, so I dodged that threat. As you might guess, there's one of these for each of the factions, so hopefully I dodge the other one. The Eye of Chaos. Okay. Command the tree again. He Now now the Runic Lycanthrope can get close enough to my um, Arhat Templar, because it's one, two, three spaces to kill the Templar. Templar has five defense. Runic Lycanthrope got plus six from the previous card, so he's at nine, and he gets another plus ten if there's lifebound cards in the center, which there's two lifebound cards in the center. Oh, dodge that. Okay, so he's six plus his three is nine total. That's still going to be enough here. So he can walk over here. He's going to kill my Arhat Templar. I could, with plus four defense, just get to nine, so I'm not going to play my secret. I'm not going to play my treasure. Arhat Templar's dead. Um, bummer for me. Uh, Fourteen... Would be the um, would be the threshold that would trigger um, if uh, these cards were already in the discard pile, but they're not. So I, I I barely escaped having to discard cards. Oh, but I didn't do Sir J. Sir J is important. Sir J is in the first time now we've seen the prime ability trigger, uh, which says put a construct from the center row into prime. If there are none, command prime. So there is a construct here. Uh, if there's multiple constructs, I get to pick which one, uh, but there's only the one. So prime now gets a construct. So, Prime's going to get another plus three, plus three. Again, we ignore ambush powers. Uh, or plus two, plus three, sorry. We just changed that card. Uh, so, Prime is now even harder to kill as a 12, 13. But it's worth a lot of honor if I can kill. Okay. So, those were two cards from the boss. Um, the boss is not controlling any zones, fortunately. So, uh, on that side, I am in a good spot. Uh, this, was, this was worn off a little while ago. And then it's my turn. All right, so the Arha Templar was just killed, so he can't help me with this fight. I would very much like to be able to kill this Prime, because Prime is now at 13 defense, which is a lot. Uh, very scary. Um, I have, I think I've got an answer to do it. So if I play the Morbid Hammer on my Reactor Monk, that would get me to 10 power, because it's plus 4 and 6. And... I need to have three more power, 
and I have Ulan the Crusher here, which if I, uh, if I play Allegiance, which means if I played another Void card this turn, which I will have with the Morbid Hammer, I give a champion plus one speed and double attack, which will double. That's not surprisingly, I can attack twice, which is that's going to be enough to take out Prime. So we're going to do that for sure. So what I need to do is play Ulan, uh, give this guy speed plus one and double attack. I also am going to give him, uh, he's also got this 10, 10 power here. So we're going to walk on over. Uh, I want to make sure I'm not in range of this guy. Uh, okay, so then I'm going to kill Prime with my double attack. Haha. -ha. So Prime dies. This is a huge thing for me. He loses the constructs. They get banished. I get four points. One, two, three, four. Uh, and then I also get my Slave Trigger, because Morbid Hammer is a Slave Trigger. I can banish a card in my hand or discard pile. I don't think I'm going to buy anything this turn, so I'm just going to banish my, my Apprentice. Uh, we have a little thing you can banish stuff too, but I'm just kind of keeping them off to the side. Um, okay, so I still have two power for my command banner I haven't spent, uh, which means I don't think I can actually kill it. Oh, I could kill this Arha, uh, this Arha Templar. Oh, this is, I'm just going to go for the clean sweep right now. So, um, whoa, Cetra, strangely enough, moved over my Twilight Scout. Bad Cetra. All right, so my Twilight Scout um, has uh, four power built in, but I have a treasure I can use, so I'm definitely going to do that. I'm going to command my Twilight Scout, walk over here, Attack the Arha Templar, burn my treasure, uh, so that I get seven power, which is enough to take him out. He is gone. That's three more points for me. Now I'm in a really good spot, and I've still got a Dreamwalker that can move a guy with speed plus one and put him out on the board. So I'm going to start getting Cetra out to the center here. So I'm only controlling one zone, so I only get one point from that, but uh, I've cleared the board of all the villains. So this is, uh, this is going very well for the home team, for the good guys. Um, so one of the things that we are working on is getting the balance level right and the challenge level of the boss deck. And one of the ways to increase the challenge, if you once you gotta get the hang of it, um, is you can start with a few cards in the discard pile. The higher threshold cards start coming up first, makes things far more challenging. Um, but one of the great things is we're gonna have you guys help test this with us, so you can kind of get the balance level right. How many cards should you start with in the discard pile? At what player skill level? All right, here we go. So we're commanding the uh, tree mini. Uh, tree Icon Villain, uh, who's going to go... Oh, I'm, let me draw my hand first. Play, play this in the right order. Um, so if he could kill one of my guys, he will. He can't quite reach anybody. So he's going to walk back over here to score this point. And then Surge B. So Surge B is the second Prime Prime, which says each player must reveal a mechanic card in their hand or exhaust two of their champions. Fortunately for me, I do have a mechanic card in my hand, so that avoided the worst of that scenario. And then deploy a cultist on the main shrine here. So he's going to get the cultist in the center shrine. So that's going to score him another point here. That's the first card we played for the turn. Now the second card. Okay, this is all going to trigger. All right, it says swap the two different honor shrines. So this is one of the more interesting cards because it changes up the equation. So we're going to swap the locations of these two shrines. So now different, different uh, guys are going to move into different zones. And then we're going to start commanding. We're going to command the... Uh, the skull guy here, this demon slayer, who's now going to run down the side field here. And then we're going to command the uh, runic legathrope, who's going to start walking towards the center. And then, because now we've got all the thresholds, we're getting towards the end game, now the boss is going to do another Surge A. So we're going to either um, equip a construct, if there is one. I don't think there is one. So since there's no construct, that means Prime gets to command, because he's so mad he's not getting a construct. It's grr. No constructs. We'll get you. Oh, wait. Actually, this is even worse for me. See, that's my reactor monk there. Um, Prime can actually just run up and get him. Um, because he's in zone, he's going to come after him. Um, and actually, technically, if I was playing correctly, uh, the Demon Slayer, I should have noticed that, the Demon Slayer would have run to kill Prime first. Because uh, he had the opportunity when he was there. It's 7 power. Uh, my guy is uh, 7... No, no, sorry. My guy's 10 defense. So Demon Slayer couldn't have killed him. This is a great opportunity to illustrate. So the AI is smart enough that they won't run after your guy if they can't kill it. The Demon Slayer had seven power. Because of this construct, my um, my Reactor Monk had nine. Uh, and so uh, the Demon Slayer will just go about his normal business, running towards the shrine. But Prime uh, will absolutely run over and kind of beat me up. So Prime's got ten attack. I've got uh, nine defense. So this would be devastating to me. So I've got one last treasure. I think now is definitely the time to use it. I'm gonna try to clock, close this game out um, by protecting my reactor monk from that attack. Um, okay, uh, that was two moves, right? Yeah, I think that was the two moves for the turn. Whew, okay, that was dicey. Um, but I think we're still in an okay spot. So um, 
the villain controls the center shrine, so gets a point for that. And now I'm going to try to put this game away. If I can just kill one of these bigger guys, um, which I think I can do with the reactor monk here is enough to kill Prime, then I can win the game. But I don't actually have enough command to command the reactor monk right this turn yet. I need to draw some. So I'm going to draw two cards off the aesthetic. Hopefully I get some command. I got exactly enough. One command point is all I'm going to get here. So I will put, uh, just for fun, I'll put an extra construct on this guy. The one militia plus my two starting commands enough to command the reactor monk. Reactor monk has 10, 12 power. Prime is only 10 defense, so it's enough to kill Prime. Prime's worth four honor, which gives me four points. Boom, victory. So now you got a taste of what the solo mode is like. If we were playing in a cooperative version, there's different maps that support more players. Uh, we could have, uh, we would have a shared turn. I'd have a shared turn with my, my friends. We would each control less minis and we would be able to battle against the boss. The boss would definitely be given a handicap there of, of flipping some cards off the deck. Um, but you can kind of see, it's really fun. There's a lot of real interesting strategies. We're continually working on developing and tweaking the cards to create more unique powers. Every time, also, you can run this exact same map and just swap out these minis, right? Swap out which ones are here. We have a ton of different designs. The, when you change the boss, obviously, a bunch of things changes. When you change each of the villain cards, everything changes. So our goal, once again, was to create a ton of replayability. Um, we'll have preset villain teams and preset player teams, so it's easy to get started. Um, but once you get the hang of it, there's tons of ways to play. I've been playing this a bunch as we've been testing it all over the last week. And I'm looking forward to playing with all of you very soon. So by the time you see this, almost certainly the Ascension Tactics Kickstarter live so please go check us out back us share uh, and ask some questions in the comments and we'll be here and uh, showing off more uh, we'll be doing live twitch streams every week on uh, twitch.tv slash stoneblade uh, usually around 4 p.m on wednesdays at least um, we'll be live so thanks for watching